when I was a teenager, I got my very first job, which was a newspaper delivery route that I would do after school about twice a week. I really enjoyed that job when I began it, and would occasionally interact with the people who I was delivering the newspapers to. They all seemed very friendly during our short interactions. I had a cart that fit all of the newspapers for my route in it, which I would drag down the sidewalk alongside me. Which I would drag down the sidewalk alongside me. I had had my route for several months, when one afternoon, as I was going through, a man was walking down the sidewalk. He greeted me very friendly, stated that I must be the newspaper girl, and he asked if I had delivered a newspaper to his house yet. He pointed at a house right down the street. I replied that I hadn't, and he suggested that I pass him his newspaper right there, rather than needing to go down to his driveway to just deliver it anyway in a few minutes. I handed him a paper and expected him to continue walking along to his house. I bent down to grab more papers out of my cart, and thought that I felt something suddenly hit my butt. When I straightened back up, he was walking away from me, with his newspaper rolled up in his hand. At the time, I really hadn't expected anyone to intentionally hit me on the butt with a rolled up newspaper. I dismissed it as either an accident, or just a figment of my imagination. Next week, while doing my route, he was sitting out on his front deck, and just watching me walk down the sidewalk, delivering newspapers to all of his neighbors. When I came down his driveway, he wolf-whistled at me, and said, Here comes the mermaid. I came up onto his deck to hand him the newspaper, and immediately turned to leave afterwards to continue my route. He kept trying to engage me in conversation as I was leaving, but I just said, I'm sorry, I have to finish the rest of my route. While I thought this interaction was odd, I also thought that it was something I could just brush off at the time. One of the regulations that I was supposed to follow for my route was to make sure that the newspapers were either placed in the customer's mailbox or put somewhere safe. Long before I had ever met this customer, I had established a pattern of putting his paper behind the deck chair beside his front door, right up there on his deck. The next time that I delivered, I didn't see the man. I planned to put the newspaper in its usual spot and just go on my way. As I climbed up the steps of his deck, his dogs barked at me through the window, which was fairly normal. As I was turning to leave though, the door suddenly shot open and the man was standing right there. He tried immediately to engage me in conversation, but I interrupted him and told him again that I needed to finish my route. This started to become a pattern. Every single time that I delivered the newspaper to his house, he would always be waiting near the door and open it as soon as I was coming up the steps to his deck. He had never come out of his house when I was delivering before, before he had met me on the sidewalk that one time, but now... He happened to be right at the door every single time, as if always waiting for me. The longer the pattern continued, the more I began to realize that this behavior was not normal. I became really uneasy, and wished to not interact with him unless absolutely necessary. One day, as I was doing my route, I noticed that one of his deck chairs was moved to the side of his deck near his driveway. I realized that I could walk a few steps down his driveway, put the newspaper under the chair without stepping onto his deck at all. Since I didn't go onto the deck that time, the dogs didn't bark, and he wasn't alerted that I was there. He didn't open the door and try to talk to me as usual when I tried to deliver the paper. I thought that this was great, and I felt a lot more comfortable delivering to this house since I wasn't interacting with him anymore. Then one day... The deck chair was moved and was put on the other side of the deck. I hadn't forgotten the reason why I didn't want to step foot on his deck and decided to put the paper in the same spot I had been putting it for several weeks, even though the chair wasn't there to secure it. I crossed the street to deliver to the next house, and just as I was stepping onto the next customer's driveway, he darted out of his house, looked at the newspaper, grabbed it, and shook it as he shouted at me across the street. He was yelling that the newspaper was about to blow away and become literal down the road, despite the fact that it was completely windless that day. I stood there and listened to him just screaming obscenities at me in shock, unable to respond. He continued to scream, saying that I was never to leave the newspaper anywhere on his deck, 
not even under a chair, but that I had to open his door and physically bring the newspaper inside. Thankfully at this point, the woman whose driveway I was standing in opened her door and began to yell back at the man that he needed to stop screaming at me, especially since she was sure that I had done nothing wrong. The man glared at her and finally went back in his house. The woman pulled me aside and talked to me for a moment, telling me to not pay that man any attention. I was really scared and upset. As soon as that man told me that he wanted me to put the newspaper inside his house, the thought that he wanted to rape me popped into my head, and I was just unable to shake it. I grabbed my cart and went home without finishing my route. I didn't feel safe being anywhere near that man or his house. Back home suddenly... I lived at my uncle and aunt's house during this time. My cousin asked me why I had come home so early. I told her what had happened, including all of the previous weird interactions. To be honest, I had never had a normal interaction with them at all. I broke down crying, barely able to even say my fear that I thought he wanted to rape me. My aunt overheard that part of our conversation, and my cousin helped me fill her in on the rest of it. I told her that I had no clue what to do. I was young and I believed that not delivering a newspaper to him was just not an option. I also felt that I had no proof to back up my feeling that he wanted to assault me, since nothing concretely implying that had happened necessarily. I assumed most people would dismiss his individual actions, like I had initially done. My aunt, however, told me she would call the newspaper I delivered for, and inform them I would no longer be delivering to his house. My male cousin and uncle finished my route for me that night. The next time I was supposed to deliver, my male cousin came out with me to deliver to the houses near the man's house, doing that section of my route first, rather than in the middle like before. There was a day when I was walking down that road by myself, not delivering papers even, and the man was just driving down the road in his truck. He slowed down and yelled out his window at me trying to get my attention. I refused to turn and look at him or acknowledge him in any way and just kept walking on. He followed me for a while before he gave up and just drove off. And thankfully, that was my final interaction with him. My male cousin continued to deliver that section of the route with me until I felt comfortable delivering by myself since I had developed a pattern of delivering my papers that I never stepped foot on the sidewalk directly in front of his house. When summer came, I got a summer job. And the next school year, I asked for a different route. It's been years since I moved out of my uncle and aunt's house, and out of that town. The last time I was in that town, I decided to take a walk down some of the streets where I had delivered, for nostalgic purposes. I could still feel a shiver of fear whenever I passed that man's house, even though I was walking on the sidewalk on the other side of the street, and never once saw him. I still don't know what he would have attempted with me if I had followed his wish, and stepped into his house, but I had a really bad feeling, and I don't feel guilty at all for listening to it. Hopefully, he wouldn't recognize me this many years later, since I'm fully an adult now, but still, I hope that I'll never meet him again. This is a little long. It has some backstory, and it goes in order from the start to the photograph. It all started with some window tapping. I live in a good area, but literally on the border of a different city that was deemed very bad. Near my home after all of this happened, I found out there was basically a swarm of child sex offenders in the seven mile radius, all the way into the neighboring city. Moving on. Late at night, I would just hear this tapping on my window. I never checked because no one just shows up at people's windows. I had a lot of friends back then, but they all knew to call me first. As it kept on happening though, I started to get more and more worried. I was about 15. My boyfriend at the time, when I was a sophomore, began sneaking into my house for the night. One of those nights, I heard the tapping once more, but it was way too soon for it to be him but it was enough that it sounded like it was to be expected. I had just gotten off the phone with him maybe only 10 minutes prior to this. My bed is directly next to my window at this time, and those windows were shit and had a wicked draft. Anyone outside next to the window would have been able to hear my conversation crystal clear. 
I called my boyfriend back and asked if that was him outside. He said no, of course. I told him to turn around and go home, and texted him what had happened. He tried to convince me it was nothing, and just my mind playing a couple of tricks on me. After that, though, I started to notice I was being followed a couple of times a week. Never all the way home or for too long when I would walk home at night. I had to get home by 11 if I was walking, 10 on a school night. So it's not like I was out at crazy hours. It freaked me out, though. Enough to the point where I didn't wear headphones anymore at night and was constantly watching my back. On to the very strange occurrences. These are the three that were most prominent, and in my eyes most creepy. 1. I was in my sophomore year of high school, and my boyfriend had just snuck into my house and was asleep. It was about 3 a.m. He had just gone to bed probably only an hour or so earlier. I had a small light on and my window was open because I was smoking a cigarette. All of a sudden, I heard this creepy whistle that went from high-pitched to low-pitched, kind of like a slow sing-song. I decided to look out the window this time and saw what looked to be an average build seemed kind of tall, just standing on the corner of my property, watching me. I freaked out and slammed my window shut. I drew the blinds and hit the light. I didn't sleep at all that night, and for the entire night, I kept hearing rustling around my window. There was a flower bed right underneath it as well. For two, 16, junior year, same boyfriend. He was the same height and roughly same weight as me. We easily looked the same from the back at night. Anyways, my boyfriend was coming through the neighbor's backyard and into mine. He comes up to the window, and as he's about three-fourths of the way in, I hear heavy boots in the grass. I look up, and as my boyfriend is in the room completely, I see a masked or hooded man about three feet from my completely wide-open window. I slam my window again immediately. My boyfriend said he didn't know if he was being followed or not. This is where I was 100% convinced that the weird shit that kept happening for that last 1.5-ish years was not coincidental or random, or at all unrelated to me. It was directed at me. I was the center of the weird shit. At this point, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to tell my parents. If I told them that part of it, I'd get in trouble for sneaking my boyfriend into my room. But at the same time, some dude literally either A, thought my boyfriend was me and was going to grab me before I got into my room, or B, was trying to jump into my room after me and do whatever he was intending to do that night. Number three, the final incident, and the part that's equally as unsettling as that last one. I was sleeping one night. It was a month or two from turning 17. It was a summer, hotter than hell, and I kept my door closed because I smoked pot and cigarettes, so the AC didn't make its way into my room. Anyways, I was asleep in these tiny little shorts and a sports bra. I was facing the window, and my bed at the time was right up against it. I woke up to the brightest flash of light. I jumped up, obviously freaked out, and heard running from the flower bed, to the grass, and to the pavement of my driveway. The motion floodlight flashed on, but could barely make out anything because the flash had blinded me suddenly. I don't know whatever happened after that. The window tapping stopped. The following stopped. There were no more flashes of light and no more whistling. It was all suddenly just over. It freaks me the fuck out that some weirdo has a photo of my underage self in minimal clothing, asleep in my room. It's probably online, and is really quite unsettling. It still keeps me up at night on occasion. So I recently started reading the posts here, and I realized that my story would fit in quite well. So here goes. I'm a 27-year-old woman, and this happened to me 9 or 10 years ago, when I was only a senior in high school. We lived in a pretty large house, but my siblings were all the way at college or boarding school. That meant it was only my parents and I in the house. I'm a crazy light sleeper, so when I woke up in the dark and saw my alarm clock flashing at 3.11am, I wasn't too surprised. However, I was wide awake. 
not just groggily stirring in my sleep. I laid there for a moment, wondering what could have woken me, when I heard very soft footsteps on the stairs outside my bedroom. The door to my room was parallel to the left side of the bed, and I happened to be laying with my back to the door. As the footsteps approached my door, I thought it must have been one of my parents checking in on me for some reason. Then the doorknob was turned, so, so slowly. Still, I thought maybe they were just trying not to wake me. The door began to open, again, slowly and carefully. It made a creaking noise no matter how slowly it was opened, so the person finally just shoved it the rest of the way to silence the creak altogether. Still, my naive brain thought it must be one of my parents. Until they clicked on a flashlight, I froze. Terror flooded me, and I remember that I instantly broke out in sweat. They were behind me, and I was facing away, so they couldn't see that my eyes were wide open as they shone the beam right on me. I always used to think that if something like that ever happened, I would just be a huge badass, whip out of my bed and punch them, attack them, Shout, scream, do something. But as I laid there, I could do nothing at all. All I could do was try to keep my breathing deep and even, despite the pounding of my heart, so that the intruder wouldn't know I was awake. After about ten seconds, they finally moved the light away from me. I prayed and begged and bartered with anything that would listen to me, as the intruder skulked about my room browsing at my things. I could vaguely see their shape, large and bulky, like they were wearing two coats. They also had a baseball cap on. They didn't shine the flashlight on me again, and after a few minutes, which felt like an eternity, they finally left my room. I could still hear them, though, walking around the rest of the second floor through my siblings' empty bedrooms. I was still sweating, still frozen in terror, and not even sure what to do. I wanted to grab my phone and call my dad who was sleeping downstairs. I wanted to call our landline so that the phone would ring and wake my parents up. I wanted to call the police. I wanted to get up and run from my room. I wanted to cry as well. But I couldn't do any of those things. I was afraid that the person would still hear me, and I didn't know if they had a weapon and would try to hurt me or my parents. I wouldn't wish such helpless terror on my worst enemy. I don't know how, but I must have passed out from fear, or maybe the adrenaline wore off and I fell asleep somehow, because the next thing I knew, it was already 6am and I could hear my parents downstairs. I ran downstairs, and as calmly as I could, I asked them if one of them had been in my room last night. Their faces were blank, and they said no, they hadn't. That was the last straw. I broke down in sobs, and I told them, Someone was in my room last night. Even as I typed this, my hands had begun shaking and I've teared up. The police were called, even though there was little they could do at that point. Apparently when my parents woke up, all of the doors to the outside were standing wide open and there was a duffel bag at the bottom of the stairs. All that was inside was a coil of nylon rope and an empty USB flash drive. I don't even want to think about what that was for. The intruder hadn't taken anything, and we have no idea why they left in what appeared to be such a hurry. It took me about a week to be able to sleep in my own room, a sanctuary which felt violated and frightening to me now. I carry pepper spray, sleep with a machete next to my bed, and double check my locks every night. Hopefully this will never happen again, but if it does, I hope next time I won't freeze. It's been 10 years and still my most common nightmare is that someone is in my room standing in the shadows, just watching me. A couple of years ago, I, 25 and female, was solo backpacking in France and made a day trip out to Versailles from Paris you have to take two separate trains to get both out there and get back. I got on my first train heading back from Versailles, and my phone was at about 3%. So I had it on airplane mode and low power, 
I kept my headphones in without anything playing, though, to deter people from approaching me. John didn't care, though. He came over and sat beside me, speaking to me in French. At this point, I'd been walking around the gardens all day and wasn't really in the mood to entertain anyone, so I pretended I didn't understand French at all. He pulled out his phone and went on to Google Translate, asking if I wanted to learn with him. I responded with, No, thank you. I went to put my headphones back in and appear even more uninterested, since apparently my body language wasn't enough for him. He continued to ask me questions through his phone, though, the next one being, Where are you sleeping? I lied and said that I was in a large hotel with my family and was currently heading back to them at the moment. He asked where it was, but all I replied with was Paris. He then started asking if I was getting off at a specific stop of the subway, which I said yes to, another lie, and he said that he'd get off with me. I immediately said no and ended all conversation. I plugged my headphones in and completely shut him off from talking to me. This prompted him to leave me alone, at least for a couple of minutes. All of a sudden, he got a phone call, and I could hear him speaking in French to his friend. Yeah, I'll get off at X stop. You go to Y stop. This set off the danger, danger alarm in my head, because Y stop was the actual stop I was going to get off at. We got to the transfer station, and he got up and off the train and waited for me at the doors. I took my sweet ass time getting up and making sure I had everything, to the point that it was very obvious I was doing it on purpose. He then left to get on another train, and I slowly made my way off onto the next as well. And by slowly, I mean painfully slowly. I got on the train at the very front and was watching everyone around me, just to make sure that nobody was being suspicious or watching me. Honestly, most of the people watching probably thought I was on something. We got to X stop, and I was watching people going off and coming on, as well as anyone just standing on the platform. I didn't see any sign of him or anyone else paying much attention to me. We get to stop Y finally, and I get off with the crowd. As soon as I turn the corner, I can see that he's standing there with four of his friends, scanning everyone coming out. I turned around so fast and went the exact opposite way, taking my hair out of a bun and trying to change my appearance as much as I possibly could. As soon as I got out of the train station, I ran back to my hostel and refused to leave unless it was with one of my roommates. Sorry you got outsmarted by a dumb blonde, my dude, but let's never meet again, so hugs and kisses.